welcome viewers to the third lecture of the series spur and helical gear cutting okay so last time uh, in the in the first two lectures we have uh, discussed at length some of the calculations uh, of uh, gears which involve module which involve number of teeth which involve rpm etc and we have had uh, introduction to you know gear trains worm and worm gears then uh, rack and pinion and after that uh, a bit of uh, discussion on spur and helical gear geometry which we will be continuing today and also uh, we have done some uh, very uh, primary calculations uh, in order to find out rpm or to find out gear ratios etc etc so today we will take up the loose ends that we left off in the last lecture and continue with our discussions on geometry of gears so that uh, it will be easy for us to uh, you know take up calculations for actual gear cutting practice on machine tools so to start with we had discussed about the pitch diameter what is after all the pitch diameter pitch diameter is a virtual diameter like physically it cannot be you know uh, tangibly identified on the uh, gear that means a gear if we say that what is the outside diameter of a gear you can actually pinpoint it point it out yes this is the uh, outside diameter which is uh, existing but pitch diameter does, that way does not exist so suppose two gears are in mesh and they are producing a definite angular speed ratio that means there is a particular rpm ratio rotations per minute ratio existing between two gears as they are rotating so this ratio is not affected by the you know speed values that these gears take up that is if we, if i speed up the, uh, one gear the other gear will also speed up if I make one gear slow, the other gear will also become slow. The thing that will remain constant is the speed ratio. In that case, if we replace the two gears by two virtual rotating drums, okay, rotating against each other without slip and replacing the two gears and producing the same angular speed ratio, that means RPM ratio or speed ratio. In that case, the diameters of those drums would be referred to as the pitch diameters of the respective gears. Let us have a quick look at a depiction of this diagrammatic depiction of this particular case. Say this is one particular gear, and this happens to be another one. And the teeth which are existing on these gears, say this one is this way, etc., and that one is that way. Let me take another color, and this gear is having its teeth this way. So, first of all, physically these two gears are existing as that toothed profile. This one is physically existing. Okay. This one is also physically existing. Now, we are making them rotate together. Say this is, say if this is the driver, this is the driven, they are rotating. We now replace them with these two rotating drums or discs. So, the restriction is that this will have to be in contact with that one, that means the center distance. Okay the center distance which the two gears were maintaining before this center distance will have to be the sum of the two 
radii of the drums, sum of the radii of the two drums, so that they will always remain in contact and one would be driving say this one is rotating this will be driving this one by friction without slip. In that case if the rotating discs produce the same rpm ratio as that obtained uh, by the rotating gears in that case the diameters of these two drums would be referred to as the pitch diameters of the two gears. So, this is what is our definition of pitch diameter. Why do we bring in the idea of the pitch diameter? Because it makes us our calculations very simple. We do not have to think of instantaneous points of contact which might you know vary with time and the instantaneous contacting radii might be different at different times. We do not have to bother about that. Now, you might raise a very pertinent question that if the point of contact is shifting and it moves you know either this way or that way the instantaneous contacting radii they will be different then how come they are going to produce the same rpm ratio. Now, in this case there is a law of gearing which says that if any two smooth profiles contact each other. Okay, so, that the common normal okay, this is one profile rotating about this point I have drawn an irregular profile to emphasize the point that it need not be you know very nicely shaped surface, but this profile is important and if there is another profile this one is say driving and this one is getting driven and they are undergoing contact here this point of contact is varying, but if always the common normal to the point of contact always cuts the line of centers at a definite point. In that case we will find that the speed ratio will remain constant. So, we choose gear profiles in this manner that means gear tooth profile when we are talking about a gear tooth you might have seen that it looks somewhat like this and this profile is very important. Now, uh, when we are not knowing much about gears we might be uh, thinking that maybe they are parts of circles or they are aesthetically made or they have come down to us you know through evolution of cog wheels to, to give us a definite shape not really so they are coming from this case. Those profiles which satisfy this condition can be used as the profile of the gear teeth here. So, naturally what are these particular profiles one example is the involute. If we get time we will discuss more about the involute, but uh, uh, are there other uh, profiles also? Yes, cycloids are there, cycloidal gears are there, but you will find in most cases we are using the involute. Why? Because the involute has some advantages which are not available with other methods. Other methods have their respective advantages, but the involute's advantage has proved to be you know the winning factor for it. For example, in case of the involute if the center distance slightly changes the speed ratio does not change. Now, what is that? It means that uh, say you are having a automobile gearbox in a car you have a gearbox with the help of which you can change the rotational rate of the wheels okay, even though you are not doing anything with the engine there is a gearbox in which you can have different output rotations per minute which is ultimately given to the wheel. Now, in that case the it, it is it is quite uh, you know uh, obvious that the, uh, the the car when moving over road might be facing lots of jerks and impacts and there is a possibility 
that you will be uh, rather the gearbox will be uh, experiencing lots of jerks due to which the center distance of some of the gears might be changing. The involute is not affected by this particular distance change of the I mean the center distance change. So, we understand that this particular profile can be different types and involute is one of the most popular ones. So, let us now look at a little more detailed uh, you know dimensions and nomenclatures used in connection with spur gears. This figure is not so large, but I hope you can follow it. For example, let us look at first of all what is drawn on the piece of paper. We have a gear tooth shown here. The gear tooth is having an outside diameter O, outside diameter. It is having a pitch diameter given by dp, dp is the pitch diameter. It is having a root diameter given by dr. Okay. It is having other things like chordal thickness C t, chordal thickness. It is having something called E addendum and it is having something called D didendum and it is having chordal addendum. Chordal addendum and addendum seem to be very close to each other. We will see what is the difference. And what do we know about this gear? Say in this example, we know the module and we know the number of teeth. Can we find out all of these values from here? And of interest would be our total depth or whole depth, which means addendum plus detendum, the working depth that means the maximum depth up to which it can go in a mating gear and the clearance that would exist between the two teeth in that case. So, let us take them up one by one. So, starting with let us now look at the piece of paper starting with outside sorry pitch diameter. Pitch diameter has to be found out and what is given m equal to module z equal to number of teeth. This is straightforward. We have the definition of module as pitch diameter divided by the number of teeth. Okay. Therefore, pitch diameter is equal to module into z. I can find out the pitch diameter if given the number of teeth and the module. Can I find out the outside diameter? Now, let us go to the figure once again. The outside diameter is shifted from the pitch diameter by addendum on this side and there will be another addendum on the other side of the gear. Okay. So, we write that outside diameter, we come back again to the paper now, outside diameter. equal to pitch diameter plus twice addendum. Now, what is the value of addendum? I do not know that. Well, those people who have been specifying years have made a very simple type of you know relationship that is addendum is equal to module. Therefore, it might be slightly different in special cases, but in the most general case pitch diameter plus twice module that is it we get the outside diameter. How is the outside diameter you know uh, uh, necessary what is the importance of the outside diameter? Well, when you are cutting a gear you start from what is called a blank from this blank 
I mean if you are subtracting material and attaining a particular shape you will be removing this material these amounts of material would be removed and you will be ultimately getting the shape which results from it. Hence the blank diameter okay, the finished blank diameter which you ultimately start cutting of the tooth spaces the, these, these are called tooth spaces these will be cut off. So, the blank diameter is required so that the machine operator can check and ultimately start on that directly. So, blank diameter that way is very relevant pitch diameter which is formed by m z. So, here we can put in m z let us see what it gives m into z plus twice m therefore, it comes out to be m into z plus 2 that is it. Now, comes the question of the root diameter what is the root diameter like the root diameter is equal to the pitch diameter let us come to the figure once again. Okay. The figure you will find the root diameter is related to the pitch diameter by subtracting didendum on both sides didendum here and didendum there on the other side of the gear. So, let us write down minus twice didendum. Now, what is didendum? Maybe it is equal to module? No. Didendum is equal to 1.25 module. So, let us write it down. You might ask why is this so? Because ordinarily it should have been didendum equal to module following the uh, definition of addendum. It is not so because we want some clearance to exist between gear teeth when they are in mesh. What do we mean by this? But before that let us write it down m into z minus Oh, just a moment 2 into 1.25 module all right. So, module can be taken common z minus 2.5 module. Now, why is this so? So, for that let us see a figure. this is one gear and this is another gear tooth coming in contact with it and maybe it is getting driven. So, this is rotating this way, this is rotating this way. So, these two gears have a contact here and say somewhere this is the pitch diameter, this is the pitch diameter of this one etcetera. Problem is from the pitch diameter this one gear has a di you know depth equal to didendum and this one gear from the pitch diameter it has a depth of addendum. If addendum and didendum had been the same if addendum and didendum had been the same in that, that case there would have been contact in some cases between this surface that means the outer outside diameter cylindrical curved surface and the root diameter cylindrical curved surface these two would have got contacted. This would have would not have given the speed ratio that is existing between these two gears. The speed ratio which is existing between these two gears is defined by the contact between these two involutes. These are not involutes. Okay. Their speed ratio is simply defined by their, by their diameter ratio and these two diameters are definitely not going to get the same ratio as the pitch diameter ratios. 
So, the ratio of speed defined by the two pitch diameters is not going to be realized by contact between these two and these should these two should never get in touch with each other. So, provide a clearance in between which is 0.25 module that is why didendum is larger than the addendum the tip of these gears gear teeth can never contact the roots of the other gear. Okay. So, we now understand why didendum is more than addendum and what is the expression of root diameter, what is the expression of the outside diameter etcetera. Now, let us look at some other and what is addendum and what is didendum. You might say why is addendum proportional to the module. Let us have a look at the gears. Now, if this be a gear, how is module affecting its shape or size? Uh, Let us take a fresh piece of paper. If this be How is module affecting its shape or size? We find that if we draw the pitch circumference from here to here, okay, this distance is constant for all gears having same module. So, module defines this distance on all gears having the same module. So, this distance is equal to pi d p divided by z. Okay. So, module is relevant to the gear teeth by this dimension and if we assume that these two dimensions I mean this is equal to this then this one is also perfectly defined by module. Once you give me the module and the number of teeth I can perfectly define this I can exactly define how much this should be. If that be so, that means the the width of the gears they are they are defined by the module and the number of teeth. Sorry, uh, yeah, by the module and the number of teeth. So, if uh, not not uh, just a moment, uh, we should say that whatever be the this is equal to pi into module and therefore, we can say I, I, I should correct this particular statement if module is given okay, if module is given we can say that this distance will get defined if module not the number of teeth not number of teeth will simply you know go on adding these distances to the circumference. So, if module is given this thing gets defined. So, if the width is defined by the module, this should be proportionate to it. And from the idea of uh, didendum being slightly more than addendum makes this 1.25 and that is why this thing becomes 2.25 into module proportionate to the module simply. Okay. And why is this distance only dependent upon the module? Because since uh, you know d p by z is equal to module, this distance is nothing but multiplied by pi. So, it is fully defined by the module. This distance is fully defined by the module. I made a mistake, it is not dependent we need not say it is dependent upon the number of teeth. No, it is fully defined by the module and we simply make now that the girth is I mean the width is defined by module. We make the height also proportionate to it. This one has to be slightly more and therefore, from that it comes to be 2.25 module. 
you might say that why is it exactly equal to module not why not 0.75 module or 1.2 module those gears are also available like you can have this to be 0.8 module which are called stub teeth etc but the most widely used one is the simplest one equal to addendum equal to module okay so once we have understood this let us move on to the other definitions which are present here for example you will find that in this figure if we, if we make a larger depiction of this one if this be one gear tooth you will find that on the pitch diameter we have depicted two dimensions this one being called as chordal sorry say C A and this one being you know is join this by a straight line and pull this up this is equal to uh, sorry chordal addendum is this one chordal addendum and this is chordal thickness chordal thickness and chordal addendum so these are very much relevant in different applications like uh, measurement of the accuracy of gears if you geometrically want to test whether the gear that you have cut is correct or not in in the use of uh, you know gear vernier tooth caliper this is very much relevant can these be measured suppose i know the number of teeth in the module uh, by the way i think i should mention here that apart from module you also have dp and uh, in case of dp the dimensions are slightly different in that case the working the total depth is equal to 2.157 by d p just because you know d p is a reciprocal of module uh, of course, the units have to be kept in mind. So, it comes at the denominator ok just like so we have 2.25 module as the total depth in case of module gears in case of d p we have 2.157 by d p. Uh, and the working depth is equal to 2 module and here the working depth will be equal to 2 by dp that way. Let us come back to our discussion of chordal thickness. Chordal thickness can be found out this way if we can you know draw a right angle triangle right up to the center. This is the sorry this is the center which you cannot see. but if I say that I know this angle theta, I know this pitch radius R p, can I find out say if this be then uh, let us give it a name p chordal thickness we can write is equal to twice p. Let us quickly have a look whether we can find out p. Can I find out theta? Yes, theta is equal to theta is equal to 2 pi that means 360 degrees divided first of all by z number of teeth. This will give you 4 times theta ok right up to the second time that this is rising this full angle is theta plus theta plus you know uh, middle point theta plus theta this way. So, if we join this to the center this will be 4 theta. So, therefore, we will be having 4 here to give theta twice pi by 4 z is equal to theta. So, I am going to supply you the number of teeth z is known to you. So, that way theta can be calculated. Can R be calculated? 
Yes, basically in all problems we will be providing you given, we will write given m comma z and r p can be found out because m into z is equal to d p half of that is r p therefore, 2 p can be uh, p can be found out this way why because once you know theta once you know r p you can find out r p cos theta r p cos theta is equal to this value p and twice of p is equal to caudal thickness can you find out caudal addendum yes this distance is equal to addendum and this small distance is equal to r p minus r p cos theta. Okay. So, tomorrow I mean uh, next day when we are taking up the subsequent lectures, uh, we will solve the problem of uh, solve the problem of find out. So, let me write down the problem here find out chordal addendum and chordal thickness for m equal to 20 or let us take a large value m equal to 200 sorry I was thinking of number of teeth m is equal to 2 m is equal to let me write it down perfectly or m is equal to 4 m is equal to 4 and z is equal to 200 find out caudal addendum and caudal thickness for m is equal to 4 and z is equal to 200. Why are we doing this? Because as I said this will be useful in the measurement of gear geometry accuracy of gear geometry after a gear has been manufactured. So, this we will be solving in our assignments uh, uh, what do you call it solution maybe in the fifth lecture. So, you can have some practice get it done yourself and then we will compare notes. Last of all let me just add uh, you might think of some problems like if I if I give you two gears one is having module 3 and another is having module 10. Does it mean larger module will have larger gear larger teeth or smaller module will have larger teeth. So, with this we come to the end of the third lecture. Thank you very much.